Have you ever thought it was possible to take a wall of fire and make it better? Well, I did, and guess what? You can. So, let's talk about how. The first combo for today is something that I like to call Hadar's Prison, and it is a combo of Wall of Stone and Arms of Hadar. Wall of Stone, like Wall of Fire, creates a wall. Only this one is made of stone. You can create up to 10 10 foot panels. Each individual panel is 6 inches deep, has 15 AC and 30 HP per inch of thickness, giving a single panel 180 HP. The goal of the Hadar's Prison combo is to enclose as many enemies as you can within the stone wall. But as per a wall of stone states, Creatures that are going to be enclosed within the wall are allowed a deck saving throw to see if they can retreat out of it before they're locked in. But this deck saving throw requires a reaction. And what if they didn't have their reaction? Enter Arms of Hadar. This spell creates tendrils of dark energy that erupt, hitting creatures within 10 feet of you, dealing 2d6 necrotic damage or have as much on a successful save. But if the creature fails that save, then they cannot take their reactions until the end of their next turn. The one big negative about this combo is that it requires the caster to get up close and personal with their enemies, making it a pretty big risk. If creatures failed their save, there shouldn't be any problem for you because you could just run out and have your buddy cast the wall of stone around them. But if the creature succeeds on their save, they still have their reaction, so running away could invoke multiple attacks of opportunity against the caster. Depending upon how optimistic you're feeling on that day, it could however be looked at as a success either way, because if they do make an attack of opportunity against you, then they don't have their reaction to escape the prison. You could also double up, effectively doubling the thickness of each panel, increasing the HP from that of 180 to 360 HP, making it near impossible to break out in any reasonable amount of time. Like I said earlier, this combo is a huge risk, so don't say I didn't warn you if you end up needing to roll a new character. But if you're ever feeling optimistic, go ahead and give Hadar's Prison a try. Just be careful you don't lock yourself in there by accident. Next up on our list, we have something that I like to call Thunder Wall, and that is the combination of Wall of Fire and Thunder Wave. Wall of Fire, as you probably could guess from the incredibly descriptive name, creates a wall of fire. The wall can be 60 feet long or a 20 foot diameter circle rising up 20 feet in the air. A creature that passes through it or ends its turn within 10 feet of the wall takes 5d8 fire damage on a failed deck save. Thunder Wave, as you may have guessed, creates a wave of thunderous force. A 15 foot cube originating from the caster pushes all creatures within that range 10 feet back who fail a saving throw. So the logic of this combo is simple. The more times an enemy goes through the wall of fire, the more damage it takes. So we're going to do just that. First, cast a wall of fire in a 20 foot diameter circle around you. At that point, melee enemies need to make a decision. Run through the fire to get to you, or just wait for the fire to go away. Whichever happens first. If they hesitate, you can blast them with spells from the range the entire time. Or, if they decide to brave the fire, they take damage regardless of their save. Once, however, they get to you, you then Thunder Wave and push their sorry butts right back into the wall of fire. Take damage walking through the fire, take damage from Thunder Wave, and then get knocked back into the fire, taking damage from the wall of fire yet again. Bing, bang, boom, Thunder Wall. Now this combo is not guaranteed because Thunder Wave uses a con save for the pushed back effect. Meaning that this is also pretty damn risky. But if you can pull this combo off, your enemies will be hard pressed to get to you or at least combat you with some pretty bad burdens. Next up on our list, we have a combo that I like to call Bonded Armor, and that is the combination of Armor of Agathis and Warding Bond. Armor of Agathis is one of my favorite spells that creates a protective frost armor around the caster, granting temporary hit points. Any creature that hits you with a melee attack takes 5 cold damage automatically. That damage occurs as long as you still maintain those temporary hit points. But you can also upcast the spell to deal more damage and also grant more hit points. For example, casting it at 3rd level grants you 10 temporary hit points and 10 damage per hit, or 4th level grants you 15 hit points and 15 damage per hit. So you can see how the damage really starts to rack up. But this combo is about empowering the armor, and we do just that with Warding Bond. Warding Bond creates a connection between two creatures. Whenever one of those creatures takes damage, the other one also takes that damage. Sounds weird, right? But the next part's the kicker. 
The target of this spell gains a plus one to AC and gains resistance to all types of damage. Now resistance to all damage is crazy because it halves any damage that creature takes. And if you're taking half damage, that means that your armor of Agathis is going to last twice as long. So where am I going with this? The longer your armor lasts, the more potential it has to deal more damage. If you cast this spell at a higher level, let's say 5th level, that's 20 damage every single melee attack against you, regardless of how many temporary hit points you have left. And as long as you're taking half damage, that means the temporary hit points last twice as long, meaning more damage and longer armor duration. Realistically, depending upon the combat that you're in, you could expect to get maybe 3 or 4 procs from the armor, equating to either 60 or 80 damage for one cast of a 5th level spell. I think that is pretty cost effective considering Cone of Cold, another popular 5th level spell, deals 32 damage on average. Not to mention you get some extra tankiness with the added hit points. So consider this combo if you ever want to make your DM question whether they should attack you or not. Moving on we have another combo, only this one was suggested by one of our YouTube regulars, Rob Era. I've taken to calling this combo Guardian of the Depths but it's the combination of Watery Sphere and Guardian of Fate. Watery Sphere creates a sphere of water that traps enemies within that lasts a minute, restraining them. The creatures can attempt to break free with a successful strength save, but as long as they are within that sphere, they can be moved wherever you like within 30 feet. Guardian of Faith creates Spectral Guardians that deal damage to hostile creatures that come into range. It deals 20 damage or 10 damage on a successful deck save. But here's the kicker. You can move the sphere in and out of range of the Guardian to force the damage and force a deck saving throw. And what's more, since they are restrained within that sphere of water, they have a disadvantage on those deck saves. So you literally trap an enemy in a sphere of water and keep moving them out and in to this Guardian's big ol' shiny sword. And technically, that sphere could trap up to four enemies, meaning that it could be a very, very bad day for an unlucky group of bandits who decided to jump you. The only negative to this combo is that the Guardian can only deal up to 60 damage, but it still deals nearly as much as a max damage 5th level Cone of Coal. While it might not be the most flashy combination, it can make quick work of unexpected enemies. Thanks again Rob for the combo. And yes, this was for you. And the final combo for today is a tried and true classic that you've probably heard of, but I want to put it on here just in case, and I like to call that the Slip and Spike. And that's the combination of Grease and Spike Grow. Grease creates... Grease. I don't know how to explain it other than that. It covers a 10 foot square and creates difficult terrain. But when the Grease appears and when a creature enters it or ends their turn there, they must make a deck save or fall prone. Spike growth is similar, only it creates spikes instead of Grease. It creates a 20 foot sphere that is also difficult terrain, dealing 2d4 damage for every 5 feet a creature moves within it. The beauty of the slip and spike is the simplicity of it. You and your party cast Grease and Spike Growth on top of some unlucky bastard, and then they slip and, well, spike. Difficult terrain halves the movement of creatures within it, and if a creature happens to fall prone, then it requires half of their total movement to stand up. If you cast this combo on top of an enemy, then they need to move through 20 feet of difficult terrain, meaning that they need at least 40 base movement speed in order to make it out without dashing. And that is not even considering if they fall prone. If a creature falls down, then they must spend half of their movement to then stand up, meaning that it is impossible for a creature to move out of that unless they have a base movement speed of 45 and dash on that turn. And very few creatures in 5th edition have 45 base move speed. This combo, while a bit basic, can keep enemies tied up, or rather, greased up, for quite a while. So be sure to pull this combo out the next time you need to control the battlefield. And that does it for 5 super powerful spell combinations in 5e. As always, I want to end the video with a huge thank you to our patrons, and a special shout out to our very first patron ever, William. This bad mamma jamma has been hanging around the channel for a damn long time, arguably, probably honestly, since we started the channel. <laughs> Anyways, William, this one's for you, buddy. Thanks a bunch, and here's to more videos. If you want to support our channel, check out our Patreon or join our Discord and join the discussion. I put links to both in the description below for you to check out. Also, if you have any combos, leave a comment below and let me know. I read every comment, almost always reply, and who knows, I might even feature your comment, yours, you, I'm talking to you, in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you, you, again, you, you.
you. I'll see you on Friday.